YouTubers, today we're going to do the unboxing of the Bosch dishwasher. This is the SHE3AR75UC. This is the Ascenta model. We're going to be installing this today too. This has the highest um, rating from Consumer Reports uh, for one of the less, lesser expensive Bosches. This comes in at about 650. We got this from Home Depot. They just delivered it. So we're going to do the install. So for the unboxing, I just got to remove some of this plastic sheeting. Just be careful. And then we can get the cardboard off. And the install will be pretty easy. Once you get everything unboxed, then you're just going to be hooking up the water line, the drain line, and the power. And just have to attach it to the inside of the cabinet. And it'll be all set. Comes pretty well protected with the styrofoam. And you know it actually is not as big as it looks in the packaging. It has all this protective stuff around it. Just lift off these little pieces of wood. Get these off. And you can put these uh, styrofoam pieces in your recycling. Notice there's some parts that come with it. Put those off to the side to get all the packaging off. And this is your some of your padding for the front area. And this says your nice quick start and I think you're probably your owner's manual. This has the rating for energy consumption, which is 269 kilowatts per hour per year. Uses very little electricity, very little water. This is the with the um, silver finish. Styrofoam pieces all off, and then it's on a styrofoam base, so you can just tilt it, get it off of the base. And then I like to like put my foot down. You can walk it off of that styrofoam base. They're actually pretty light. We just um, pulled out our Mila dishwasher that we had for many years. It's a great dishwasher. It's finally had. Um, too much problem with the circulation pump, which is about $600, so we decided it made more sense to replace it. But this is a lot lighter. Probably good to have two people, though, if you have to haul it around. I'm just getting it off of that styrofoam base. This is the kick panel. Put that off to the side. Now we're just going to get rid of this, put it in the recycling, and we'll do the install. Now we're opening up the front. And we'll notice inside we have a few important things. So you have these little spacers that kind of help it to not get banged up during the shipping. We'll pull those out. More styrofoam. A little one over here. Let's get out so we can pull out this basket. There we go. Okay. Let me get this strain tube out. There's our utensil basket down over there. All right. Looks good. A little water in there, which is good. Usually these come shipped with a little water at the bottom because these are wet sumps. Um, if you don't have any water in there, actually add a little water, just about a quarter of a cup because it needs to have that to start up. I installed these before and not had that wet and then the machine actually won't, won't get going. All right, so I'm gonna pull the upper rack out, get this piece out, remove this little string. Okay, so this is all ready to go. Close this one. Inside this packet, you have a couple of things here. You have a quick start and safety guide. You have a French version of that. You have 
um, some of the extra pieces that you can order for your Bosch. You have your registration card. Good to fill this out and mail it in. Get your, your machine registered. That way if there's any uh, changes or recalls, they can contact you. Sometimes there's safety recalls and they need to be able to get a hold of you. Have your owner's manual. Give you information about your installation and also about how to use your machine. And in this one, you have some of the hardware for installation. And this one gives you um, one of the soundproofing pads that go in the front after you've done some of some of the other installation steps. So we're going to get that off to the side, put that near the kick panel and near the drain hose. This is your power cord. So that's really simple. That just plugs into the back of your dishwasher and then you plug that in. That'll be nice and easy. That three prong for underneath your sink. We're going to install the drain line right here, which is really easy to do. We'll be putting this, this end on. Uh, it does remind you, though, if you have a brand new garbage disposal, you might have a little plastic plug right there. So it's showing you on, the, on this how to use a hammer and a screwdriver just to pop out that plastic plug. But if you've already had previously... Um, a dishwasher hookup to your disposal. That plug's already gone. This is only if you put in a new disposal. And that talks about you can hook this up to an air gap thing up by the kitchen sink. If you don't have an air gap, it's okay. You can just make sure that you have the drain line go through a high loop, as high up as you can, up into the under part of the sink, and then back down to the... Um, garbage disposal, that high loop is important because if water fills up the sink, it'll fill up the disposal. And if you don't have that loop, that water will flow backwards and pollute your dishwasher. So you either want this air gap thing we see in B, or like in A, you want this big loop. That's just reminding you of that. So you can take that off, leave it on if you want. And this is the one that'll go to your disposal comes with a kit which will have a little hose clamp for you. So we'll go ahead and take that off. And we're just going to squish this with a pair of pliers and get that on there. Your hose clamp pliers, but any kind of pliers or vice grips would even work. Just get that over the rubber one. And then you just want to get that onto your dishwasher, I think I'm going to go, just thinking about the orientation, go out. This way, I'm just going to push that on as far as it'll go. Alright, and then I'll get the hose clamp all the way on there. And then I'll let go of the tension, and that'll be on nice and tight. We got it. All right, next thing we'll do, hook up the power connector right here. While we're back here, it's fun to see this little guy here is what can raise up the back of your dishwasher. So you can spin it pretty easily by hand. You can get a wrench on there, or you can put a screwdriver in these slots and turn it. And if you go to your left, it's going to raise up the back of the dishwasher. Go to your right, it'll lower it. And then there'll be some in the front, too, for adjustment. At this point, I'm going to start feeding some of these things through the hole in the cabinet back here. This will bring it underneath the sink. Drain hose. And the power cord. Power to the dishwasher. And then the fill hose, we're going to put it underneath so it can go toward the front of the dishwasher. Slide it through here, and we're going to start pushing the dishwasher back into the cabinet. 
and they give you a lot of room you can reach underneath from the front to grab that hose the silver hose Just sliding that back we're gonna make sure the insulation sound insulation is nice and in position and not getting snagged on anything as it goes in try the other side There we go. These are pretty quiet dishwashers compared to a lot of other models. So I'm gonna pull on my drain hose a little bit now. More of it to come through. A little bit more on my power cord. Looks good. And I can push this in a little more. And they're nice and snug and I do want it to go higher though fill this gap so I'm gonna raise the feet and I'll raise the, the feet in the back too so you just have to kind of make it fit whatever space you have in your in your house but I do want to get rid of this gap So what I'm doing is I'm tilting up the dishwasher with my hand, and then I'll spin these guys down. They're pretty easy to spin out. And then in the back, I want to get that one too. You can use a wrench to get that one in the back, or a screwdriver, but I want to turn it that way to get the back to come up. This is where we hook up, where we hook up the water line. So there's a little brass thing you have to get, um, hose connector that's a pretty big one that goes into a little one and the little one hooks up to here and they're pretty cheap you can get them get them at Home Depot or a hardware store we'll show you that in a second I'm gonna check to see if it's uh, level before we finish installing by putting some screws in to hold it into the cabinet so these dishwashers do really well if they are level let's see how we're doing so it's about right in the middle looks pretty good on the this plane you don't want it to be too cattywampus like like that or like that. If you're like that, water flows to the front. If you're like that, water flows to the back of the tub. So fairly level, could be slightly off is okay. All right, I think we're good. So you wanna look at a couple of things before you screw it in. Make sure that this is straight. If it's not, you can grab it and you can tilt it until it's straight. Look at the side and reference it to the sides of the cabinet. Like these are straight and you say, are these straight? If they're not, you could mess with the feet a little bit to get them to get straight. So if you want to make any adjustments underneath the dishwasher, you can move these feet pretty easily with a pair of pliers. You can do it with your fingers. Um, you can put a screwdriver in the slot and turn it. And then there's one in the back. Kind of hard to see in the video, but it's the same thing. You can just reach in with your hand and move it. Now we're going to hook up the water supply. And to do that, your dishwasher doesn't come with this, but you can get one of these kits. This is the Eastman Steel Flex Universal. Fits all models. Six feet. Gives you one of these. But really, you're looking for not this brass elbow, but this round one. Let's get that out of there. This thing. And this allows you to connect to this one. So all you, all you got to do is get it underneath here. Open this up so you can see a little better. And I'm going to very carefully spin this brass nut. I don't want to cross thread it because it's metal going onto plastic and it should go on very easily. There we go. Yeah, the first ones didn't feel, they felt a lot of resistance. That went on really easy, so I had, had to get the angle right. So now I'm just tightening that with my fingers, get a little tighter. I'll get this thing oriented off to the side so this can plug in like that. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit with some pliers. 
So for my install today, I'm going to be putting screws into the side going into the wood, but sometimes your application is such that you need to mount it to the top. And if that's the case, you use these little guys that come with, come with your dishwasher. So these fit in that little slot, in the metal slot, it fits in the other one, and then you bend these up, and then you put a screw, this locks it into the frame, you put a screw up there into the wood to hold it in. So you kind of go into the slot, bend it, bend that up, same on, same on this side. And you can use that but it's also possible to go in from the side which is pretty easy so let's go ahead and tighten up that water line i'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn with the pliers not much i don't want to i don't want to strip out those plastic threads i just want to get it snug go ahead and put on this water line again you just got to Make sure it's threading on nice and easy. Shouldn't be any resistance until it gets on there pretty far. So we got this in position, just tightening this one, and then we're going to turn on the hose underneath the sink, make sure there's no leak. Whenever you do this, if you open the door, it gives you a little more room to work. You can see you got pretty good room. When you close the door, you lose about four inches. So this just makes it a little bit easier to do this kind of thing. All right. So we're going to turn on the water supply. Sometimes when you turn older valves, either all the way on or all the way off, they're going to leak a little bit. And that goes away pretty quick. It's just the seals are kind of goofed up. So now that leak went away. It's on full blast. Let's see if there's any leaks underneath. Okay, it looks good. We're gonna leave off the panel here for just a little longer until we do the final test. Okay, we're gonna do the drain line now. So we're gonna pull this, as much of this into the cabinet as we can hose clamp. I like to use these. I like to use these more, uh, I don't know, more standard ones. They just seem easier to work with. So, let's see if we got all the, all that drain hose in all the way. Still got some more. That's good. So we want to have a little bit of a loop. I actually prefer this more European way of doing it. You go through the high loop because those air gaps are pretty famous for clogging. I'm just using some of the stuff that's already up here to get the high loop going. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna put this onto here. Remember that if you have a new disposer, you wanna pop out the little plastic plug that's in there with the screwdriver. There we go. All right, we're gonna get that on a little further. You can put a little vegetable oil, vegetable oil or some kind of oil on this piece and that can make it easier to get these rubber pieces to go on. There we go. Tighten that up. Okay, I'm going to plug it in, give it a test, make sure everything's working. Remember that underneath your sink, you probably have an outlet that's dedicated to um, garbage disposal and one that's dedicated to dishwasher. You don't want to get them mixed up because the one for garbage disposal only has power when you turn on the switch. And this one has power all the time. Okay, let's see how we're doing. So, power light comes on. We turn it off. Sure it's closed all the way. Turn it on. Goes to auto wash, which is good. And it'll blink until you start. If you ever want to 
reset it or drain it you can just press the start button for three to four seconds and this display will change so I'm just going to start it so I'll just press it and that goes solid and I can hear things happening underneath I can feel this as the drain motor is vibrating Here's the fill valve right here behind this. It's bringing water in. That valve opens up. Let's water come in. So when you start these up, there'll be a lot of weird pauses. Don't worry about that. Just be patient and it'll, it'll get going. These are the water exits the drain. So it's just testing out the circulation motor, it's testing out the drain motor. It does this little um, check before it really starts up a cycle. It does make a lot, makes a lot of different noises. You can hear the speed of the drain motor picked up. Now we can hear that valve just opened up. We can see this move. And that means it did all of its safety checks, everything checked out, and now it opened up this valve and we have water coming into the dishwasher. Once it fills, it'll start moving the water around, it'll circulate. So we're just checking before we put on the panels here to make sure that it's really um, doing its job. So now I can hear circulation. Just turn on for a second. You got to turn on again. So that's the water swooshing around. When you put on your um, insulation, it'll actually be not not as loud, but it's already pretty good. Not not that not that loud. So if you open the dishwasher door now, you'll see water squirting around. A little bit of water right there at the bottom. So when I opened it up, it stopped it, and then I press the button, starts again. So another part of the cycle now is adding more water to get the water level up a little higher, and then it'll really start circulating it around. One thing we'll do today too, next, is we'll put the screws in to hold it in the cabinet, and we're going to remove a film that makes uh, this nice finish protected, but when you take it off, it's even you can, even better, even shinier. You can see the shiny part there, the dull part here because of the sticker. I've come to many homes, so to fix their Bosch dishwasher, and they never remove the sticker. When you take it off, it's really beautiful. Okay, these are more of the noises you're going to hear when it's really doing its thing, when it's really washing the dishes around. Since it is empty, it's a little louder than it would be if you had dishes in there. We're using the auto wash right now. If you ever um, have a dis uh, keyboard that isn't working, the child lock right here might be on. You can hear it draining right now. And you just press that for about three seconds, it'll turn it off. Drain the water out pretty quick. I'm prying underneath here, pry back on that one. Get that out of the way. Get that one out. Put a little light pressure there, not heavy. Okay. And it's possible even to not even have to use fasteners if you get this really in there tight by lifting the legs, but it doesn't hurt to have fasteners in there. All right. So we just closed it. We're still getting the bleak, blinking going. I'm going to hold this for three seconds. One, two, three. There's a reset. So the display changes and it's going to do about a three minute drain cycle. And that'll also um, erase any uh, codes. Like if you had a, a code of uh, some type of an error shows up, 
by pressing that for three to four seconds. You'll drain out any water that's in there. It'll uh, allow you to start over a cycle and it'll get rid of any stored um, codes that are in there. Now, if there's still a problem, the codes may come back on a subsequent cycle, but it's a pretty good feature. So right now it's just draining out any water that's in there. We got the screws in and next we're going to take off this plastic sheathing that's covering the door. Starting from the bottom, I'm just going to pull, take you a little time to do this. Try to go slow so you can get a big chunk of it to come off with you so you don't have to do it in a lot of little pieces. So this part you can just kind of pick out, <clears throat> take your time. If it really bothers you though, feel like there's some remnant there that you really want to get out, you can loosen these Torx uh, tens, just loosen them up a little bit and then you can get to the film because the film's kind of caught between this panel and this panel. Okay, we got that done. And yeah, now it's a lot, it's a lot shinier. Looks good. All right, let's do this kick panel now. We have a little piece of soundproofing we're gonna pop in there. Okay, and you can kind of see there's a cutout shape. We're just matching that, and that's just gonna allow for a little more soundproofing. Put this slips behind here. Like that. That goes over there. Slip that behind the hose. It's just uh, sound deadening material. It does help a little bit. Okay, we're going to put this nice decorative kick panel on. That underneath. And we'll go ahead and put in the screw that holds it. That one, and the next one, and for this house, they have a continuation of this trim piece, so we'll put that on. So it just fits in there like that. Okay. So when you're all ready to test it out, we just got a few dishes in there. It didn't have a full load. We're gonna go ahead and add our detergent. This is Cascade Complete, which is a pretty good product. Close that one. If that ever sticks, I mean, doesn't lock in, just <clears throat> clean around there really good. Probably has some residue that's not letting it stick. And if you ever want to clean 
your filter, just you have, the, you have these arrows lined up, just turn it, lift it up, and you can run this underneath the sink. You can pull off this one. This is the fine filter, this is the macro, this is the micro. Clean it, get it nice and clean, put it, in, put it underneath the sink, hot water, toothbrush, old toothbrush. And get this back in. Push it down in. And we're going to line up these arrows. So when those arrows line up, it locks it in. You want to confirm it's locked in. If it's not locked in, it's floating. You can pull bad stuff in, into the mechanism. So it's good to make sure you have that locked. You can pull these up and clean out any debris that, that build up in there. All right, so I'm gonna shut that. Shut that one, turn it on. Get that display, press start. Get the solid, and it'll take a little while for it to fire up, but it'll be a good test. So it looks pretty cool. I like it. All right, we got it installed. It's been running for a little bit now, doing a good job cleaning. I think it looks really good. It's very quiet. It's only 50 decibels. So you can easily carry on a conversation. Um, I think this is as quiet or maybe even quieter than the Mila Incognito that we had here previously. Looks good. Let's take a look inside. So it's just in the wash part of the cycle. Everything looks good. Close it. Press start. All right, I'm happy with it. I'd say um, compared to the Mila, um, a little bit more of this plasticky feel, but it has nice metal components. It has a combination of metal tub with plastic at the base. But uh, for $650 at, at Home Depot, that's pretty good and it has a really high rating. I'm really happy with the uh, how quiet it is and how easy it is to use. So I think this will be a good dishwasher. Our Mila lasted for I believe 18 or 19 years. We'll see how this one does. Thanks so much for watching our video and please subscribe to our channel. That'll allow you to get brand new repair videos every week. Make sure you hit that bell notice so you get your new videos. Thanks again.